Hello guys, welcome to the Common Sense Student. Here we learn it, become it, share it. My name is David. Please guys, give this video a thumbs up because I know you're going to enjoy it. And also feel free to leave a comment. But most of all, please consider becoming a Common Sense Student by subscribing to our channel. So have you ever heard of Sam Cooke? He was a beautiful songwriter and singer back in the 1960s. He died in 1964, as a matter of fact, from an untimely death. I'm still bothered by that. And I must say that he wrote some very beautiful songs, and one of his most beautiful songs that still resonates with me until this day. Not only because, I must add, that it was very well written, but because it represented what was going on at the time in America, and still going on until this day. There was a lot of social tension and and um, racial unrest and this song depicts it let me share the first verse and the chorus of the song and you can see for yourself it says i was born by the river in a little tent oh and just like the river i have been running ever since it's been a long a long time coming but i know i know a change is going to come oh yes it will isn't that beautiful? He said he, he was born by the river in a little tent. A tent is not a, especially a small tent is not a, a good place to be born. But he said just like the river, he has been running ever since. I must say that just the, just the words by themselves represent so much, if you think about it very deeply. And uh, he uses a river to depict uncertainty hope or a lack of hope he spoke about disappointment and change and what better way to do this than with a river i think we can learn a lot of things from a river because our lives in many ways are just like a river and that brings me to my topic for today the raging wisdom of the river so let me start by telling you what is a river a river is a natural body of fresh water that flows downhill from a mountain in a, within, the, within the confines of a river bank or a channel from a source high up in the mountains. And then its source is usually a glacier, a lake, or another river, or it could be a river basin. A river basin is an area where, where rainfall accumulates and then re-emerges from underground as a stream. So rivers also have or contribute many benefits to us. Rivers, as a matter of fact, support um, ecosystems of plants and animals, and they are also the cradle of civilization. The bigger the river, the bigger the civilization. And they provide things like food, drinking water, irrigation, transportation, hydroelectric power, tourism, and recreation. So they directly benefit our lives. And also, river Rivers come in different lengths, and I'm going to give you the top four longest rivers, as a matter of fact. But let me say that it's kind of difficult to classify rivers, because what we might consider to be a river might be a creek in some other definition, or just a brook. But the fact is that we have about 165 major rivers in the world. So let me start by giving you... Let me start by giving you the top four, and I'm going to start from the, the fourth longest to the longest. Okay, so the fourth longest river in the world is the Mississippi. The Mississippi, as you know, is found in the United States, and it's about 3,902 miles long, and it's a part of a river system. I wanted to pay attention to this. It starts from the Jefferson, then the Missouri, the Missouri pours into the Mississippi. The Missouri is actually a part of the Mississippi. And I must say that the Missouri is actually longer than the Mississippi by itself, if you should separate them. The, Mississippi is, the Missouri is about 100 miles longer than the Mississippi River. And the Mississippi River originates, or if you're looking at the whole river system, originates in Lake Itasca, Itisca, Tasca, I hope I pronounced that well, in northern Minnesota, and flows into the Gulf of Mexico. Then we have the Yangtze River in China. This is a few miles longer than the Mississippi, 3,917 miles as a matter of fact. It is the longest river in Asia, 
and it's the only river that's entirely within one country. And this river, I won't call those names, but this river have tributaries. These are other rivers that contribute to the Yangtze. As you can see, the Dank Danku, I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly. And then you have the Jinsa, or Jinsha. This river pours into the Yangtze. It's the final tributary that pours into the Yangtze. And this is a part of the entire river system of the Yangtze. And this river originates in a glacier in Tibet and flows into the East China Sea. Then we have the Amazon River. This river is, is one of the most famous rivers in the world. And it is the second longest river in the world, 3,976 miles long. And it has 20% of the fresh water in the entire world. Isn't that amazing? And this river system, as you can see, incorporates four other tributaries that pour into the Amazon. And this river originates in Peru and flows into the Atlantic Ocean. And then we have the River Nile, the Nile River in Africa. This is also one of the most famous rivers in the world. And this river is also a part of a river system. And it originates in Lake Victoria in Tanzania and Uganda and flows in into, the, into the Mediterranean Sea. Now, let me say this in closing, this segment of the video. Rivers all have a source. Likewise, we have a source, a time of birth and a place of birth. And rivers also flow within a channel and river banks. We also are alive. And, and no, let, before I go any further, let me say, it flows within a channel or river bank because it, meant, it keeps the river in check and also it maintains the river's discipline. And so too with our lives. Our lives flow within a specific channel or banks that help to confine us. First by our bringing and then the channels that are determined by us via our decision or choices. And then finally, a river is a part of a river system, just like our lives. It's supported by other rivers, like, just like our lives are supported by other people. So guys, in this segment, we are going to talk about the different stages of the river. The different stages of the river represent different stages of, of our own lives. And at different stages of the river, different things happen, just like there are different occurrences at different stages in our own lives. So from the diagram, as you can see, you have the upper course, the middle course, and the lower course of the river. The upper course, we could say, is our youthful stage. The middle course is our mature stage and the lower course is old age. Now I haven't put any or uh, applied any age range with any of the stages because I believe that all of us mature at, different, at a different pace and at different stages in our own life. So it's rather subjective, but you can add your own age range if you want. Now let's start by talking about some of the features in the upper course of the river. At this stage of the river, the river is very powerful. It, it is carrying big boulders and rocks and it carves a deep valley, V-shaped valley as a matter of fact, because of the force of the river. The gradient, because it's coming down from the mountains and also because of the fact that the river is so powerful. So it, a combination of factors um, contribute to the forming of this V-shaped valley. The gradient, because it's coming down from the hill, and gravity, and the power of flow of the river. And next, we have uh, um, waterfalls that are present in this stage of the river. Waterfalls are very common in the upper stage because of the nature of the rocks that are, in, that are in the upper stage and the force of the water, again, as I have said before. But there are other features also that we are going to look at. Let's look at our common sense comparison chart. So the upper course of the river, the youthful stage, as I said before, you have a very narrow channel. And for our lives, we could see that at this stage of our life, we lack life experience, of course. We don't know it as yet, but we lack life experience. We think because we're 18 or 19 or 20 or 21 that, oh, we know everything. Even though just a few years before we were in diapers. Our perspective of life is very narrow because we don't have life experience and we lack 
we lack a proper point of reference and that goes without explanation. At this stage of the river or so, there isn't a lot of food nutrients. I'm talking about food for fish. And we could attribute that to wisdom. We possess little to no nutrient of wisdom. We're prone to making mistakes as a matter of fact. And we think we know everything. I can speak for that. I thought I knew everything. And then later run in life, I realized that I knew absolutely nothing. And then we have fast flowing water. The river at this stage possesses tremendous power and energy. When we're young, we have a lot of energy. And we're prone to impulsiveness as a matter of fact. And we lack proper knowledge of the consequences of our actions. And so at this stage, we make a lot of mistakes. A lot, a lot of unnecessary mistakes. Now let's move to our middle course of our river. Let's go back to the diagram. So at this stage, at the middle course, which, are, which is our mature stage, I would say our mature stage, let me give you a number. Say you, are, you should be in your 40s by this stage. So at this stage of the river, let me go back to the river before comparing it to our own lives, there's a wider valley because the power or flow of the river is not so much so tremendous as in the upper course. And then you have natural features like meanders and are meandering where there's a winding effect in the river. It's a beautiful, it's very beautiful to look at as you can see in the video. And also we have tributaries. Tributaries are rivers, are streams that connect to other rivers. And where these rivers meet, we, we call it a confluence. Or it's, it is called rather a confluence. And uh, let me go back and explain more about meanders. So meanders are natural occurring features in the middle course of the river and they are formed when um, soil or eroded material is removed from the outer bend of the river and deposited on the, inner, on the inner bend of the river. And because of the flow of the river, it gives a natural winding beautiful effect that I love to see so much. Now let's look at some other features in, the, in our comparison chart. So in the middle course of the river, which is our mature stage, we have a, wide, a wider river, river channel, wider than the upper course, of course. So at this stage of our lives, we can say we have life ex some life experience because we have lived, you know, we have done some things. Yes, we have made some mistakes. We have learned some lessons. We possess more depth and, pers and more in-depth perspective of life. And we have a wider view and a point of reference. So as it pertains to food in the river, our nutrients, our wisdom, as I refer to it as, we have grown in wisdom and understanding, or we should have grown in wisdom and understanding. And we should learn from our previous mistakes and have more humility, nor we know that we don't know everything. Um, let me say again that every one of us um, develop differently because you have people actually who should be at their mature stage who are still acting like children so this is rather subjective and it depends on who you are and your life experience you are bringing there are so many things that contribute contribute to you your level of maturity at this stage of your river so the water at this stage is also slower moving so we still have energy but we should be using our energy more strategically. And we should be less prone to impulsive behavior and more self-aware. Being self-aware is about being aware of who we are as an individual. Why we're here, what we want to do with our lives, our direction, etc. And we should have more knowledge and, of, and knowledge of the principles that govern life. All of these things are subjective. And it's only left to happen stance if we do not do any work in the upper course of our river as I will explain later on in this video. So as you can see guys, we have other features, the meandering of the river, that bend that I spoke to you about, the beautiful winding effect that the river has that I love to see so much and the, and the wider landscape. So our lives, if we should use our lives as an example, we should be using the wisdom we have acquired to navigate life, just like the bend in the river. 
We should be bending and meandering depending on the situation. We should be pursuing meaning in life. We should have more meaningful relationships and we should navigate life's challenges even better. So the tributaries. I explained earlier that tributaries are streams or a river that flow into other rivers. Before I go any further, I must say that we are all tributaries. Once you are in a relationship or in relationships with anybody in your life, you are a tributary, you are contributing to, contributing to them. So with our own personal lives, others should be contributing, contributing to our lives and we should be contributing, contributing value to other lives. I don't know why that word is giving me problems today. We are a part of a system that's much bigger than us and we should be giving service. So that's the, low, the middle stage or the mature stage of our river. Now if you look back at the diagram, we are going to talk about the lower course or the old stage of the river. As you can see, the features change in this diagram. I will go more in depth. There is a, still a minute meandering or a winding effect in this diagram, but it all, it's, it's much different. It's, it's very different for every river just like it's different for our own personal lives. Sometimes there's no meandering. The course is much straighter. But is in, in this diagram, there is a bending. Now, at this stage of the river, you have features like floodplains and deltas and the river mouth. Floodplains, look at this beautiful picture. Isn't it beautiful? Floodplains happen because of the fact that the bank of the river is much lower at this stage. And the water is even calmer than the middle stage and the upper stage. It's actually the reverse or opposite of the upper stage. The banks are much lower, and so the areas of land that are next to the river easily get flooded. And so these areas are highly fertile and they serve as fish nurseries. And uh, there are just natural occurring fi um, features along the course of this path as the river makes its way to the sea. Then we have deltas. These are triangular shaped um, features that are made up of sediment. If you look at this diagram, you can see it at the mouth of the river. And then we have the river mouth. The river mouth is where the river flows into the ocean or sea, a lake, or even another river. And sometimes river, rivers even go underground where they do not meet another body of water. So this is the lower course of the river. Now let us look at some features or the meaning of these features from our comparison chart. So at this stage of the river, the river is much, has a much wider valley and low river banks. As it pertains to our lives, we should have a vast life experience. We should have. Because it depends on how you have lived. Because I know people that are in the, their lower stage or old stage of their lives. And they don't have a lot of life experience. As a matter of fact, their perspective is very much like the upper course or the youthful stage. It's a very narrow channel. It, they have a very narrow perspective of life. Next, we have an expansive perspective of life. As I've said, we have life experience. We have an objective point of reference because we have lived, we have experienced things and we should be more emotionally mature. Just like the river being mature, very mature at this stage where it's now giving and affecting other features in its environment, we should be more emotionally balanced and mature as individuals. Let's go to our ne next feature. Our next feature is where the river still has food. As a matter of fact, a lot of available food at this stage. And uh, as I said, food could be compared to wisdom. We should, even, we should have even more understanding and wisdom and be prone to making less mistakes, especially more of the same mistakes, the mistakes that we made in the youthful stage of our lives. We should be able to apply what we have learned much quicker and easier. And all of this, as I have said before, is very subjective. It's all left to the individual because these are not things that just happen naturally, just like with the flow of the river. These are things that we have to work on as individuals. So the water is very slow flowing water at this stage, at the river. So at this stage of our lives, we are moving at a slower pace. We should possess more patience and not prone to impulsive behavior and we should be prioritized in the usage of time and energy. And uh, the river speaks for itself. 
the river does these things naturally. But these are things that we have to work on personally for us to get to this stage. Have you ever met somebody that's in their 80s and they're acting like they're a teenager? Their reasoning is very limited. They have no understanding, a very narrow perspective of life. I've met a number of persons like that and I'm sure you can relate. So let's move to the next stage, which is in the next segment of our video. So in this segment, we're going to talk about the natural cycles of floods and droughts. These are natural occurrences in nature and our lives also have natural cycles of floods and droughts. So floods are caused by excessive rainfall or precipitation, especially in the upper course of the river. And what happens is that when you have these floods and the river flows increases, it overflows its natural channels and river banks and it floods the surrounding landscape. This brings a lot of new nutrients, fresh nutrients to the landscape and is very beneficial to these areas. And with our lives, we could see floods as abundance, having good relationships, money, success, happiness. But there are also negatives to a flood. A flood can cause a lot of damage to human habitation, wildlife, and just the, and the surrounding landscape itself. And with our own lives, we can experience a lot of damage when we have an overabundance because we are not prepared or mature enough to deal with these blessings. And what can happen is that we can become victims of our own success. Next, I'm going to talk about droughts. So droughts are the opposite, are opposite weather effect as in comparison to floods. Where droughts are concerned, there's little or no rain at all. And the riverbed actually dries up. And in some areas, you only have pockets of water just to sustain life until the rain come, rains come again. And with these circumstances, it doesn't have to be, the river doesn't, the river doesn't complain. The river doesn't complain, oh, there's a drought, what am I going to do? The, ri the river adjusts our adapts. And it's just the same with our own lives. We must learn to adjust and adapt during these circumstances. Because droughts are not there to destroy us. They are there to make us stronger, to make us more resilient, to make us more disciplined. So these are the natural cycles of life. And we must learn to deal with these cycles because they are going to come. And we do that by preparing in each stage of our courses for these natural effects. As a matter of fact, if you reach your lower course and you're not able to deal with certain things, certain floods and certain droughts, certain disappointments certain, and certain amount of abundance, then it shows that you have not done the work in your other courses, in your upper course and your middle course, vice versa. So this is something that you must consider. These are natural cycles and we must learn to deal with them because they are part of life. They are part of our river course. In this segment, I'm going to talk about human activity that leads to the damage of the river and river pollution. So human activity takes its shapes in different forms, comes in different forms. First, from the introduction of invasive species or the mining of sand and stones from the riverbed. When sand, stone, silt is removed from the riverbed, it prevents the river from properly mitigating, mitigate flooding. That is a natural occurrence, as I discussed earlier, as it pertains to rivers. And also it damages the river's ecosystem. And then we have dams that we build for hydroelectric power, etc. Now this blocks the natural channels of the river and affects the flow, not just of the water, but also certain fishes like, um, for example, salmon or migratory fish. They live all their lives in the ocean, but at a certain time when they are ready to reproduce, they return to the upper courses of the river. And dams can be a tremendous hindrance to them getting to their breeding grounds. And then I want to go further and talk about river pollution. So river pollution can happen in several different ways. You have sewage being emptied in the rivers, you have garbage, you have oil, you have industrial waste. I'm telling you, the amount of different pollutions or types of pollutions are, um, it cannot be numbered. 
And then there is something else I want to talk to you about more in detail, and this is nutrient pollution. This is a form of pollution that is caused by the, the runoff from farms, um, fertilizer. So too much, this produces too much nutrients in the river. And there is a tremendously high amount of nitrogen and oxygen in the river, which acts like fertilizer. And this causes excess growth of algae. Algae growth blocks the light that's needed by plants such as seagrass. And when algae, seagrass, die, they decay. And while decaying, the oxygen in the water is used up. And this leads to low levels of oxygen, which kills fish, crabs, and other aquatic species. Oh my, this is very damaging to the river. And you'll find this mainly in areas where you have large farms that are close to, to rivers, streams, etc. And this helps to poison the river and change the chemistry of the water, which in, in essence damage the ecosystem of the river. Now, how our lives are affected by pollution? We are affected by pollution by the hurts we have suffered because of the abuse we have endured and the effects of our poor choices and decisions and holding on to regrets. All of these things are psychological, but these things affect the poisoning or the pollution of our lives and these things that we definitely need to deal with. So, the effects. Oxygen being cut off from our lives. Oxygen is important to the river. So, also is oxygen to our lives. Our lives need to breathe. Our, our lives need an environment where it, it can succeed. So, Oxygen being cut off from our lives stifles our endeavors, it saps our energy and drive, and it breeds distrust for others, suffocates our emotions because of our toxic psychology. Also, we are addicted to destructive vices, like other people abusing us and negative behaviors. And these are the pollution to our lives, cause pollution to our lives, which affect the chemistry of our lives and eventually the course of our river. So Let's talk about how we cleanse our lives. Just like the river needs to be cleansed, the river needs help. So human activity is the cause and humans can also contribute to the revival of the river by helping with the cleanup. And a river might take a lot of time to re rejuvenate or rebirth or rebuild itself. And also for us, it's a process where healing is concerned. So we need to get help. But more than anything is we need to stop the pollution. Whatever it is in terms, um, whatever it is that is contributing, contributing um, pollutants to our lives, um, whether it is toxic relationships or we also inflicting um, damage to our life via negative behaviors from self-criticism or holding on to regret. We need to deal with these pollutants. So guys, let me give you a summary of everything that we have, been, we have discussed. So we discussed that a river has a source, just like we have a source, a time we were born and a time we will make our transition. A river also has different stages, just like there are different stages to our lives. We were born, our upper course, and then our middle course, our stage of maturity, and then our lower course, our old age. There are different things that we must accomplish at different stages of our lives. And the success of each stage affects the success in the other stage. For example, you wouldn't wait until you're in your old age or lower stage to start thinking about retirement. This is something that you should do in your upper course. Whatever the achievements or foundations that you have laid in one course affect our benefits or negatively affects the other courses of your life. And these are things that we must, must pay attention to. And then there is the issue of service. Rivers serve everybody. Rivers serve the ecosystem. They serve us as human, the humanity. And they serve other rivers. We must also be conduits of service. First to our own lives. Then others in our immediate environment. And then to humanity. Rivers also go through natural cycles. And they deal with these cycles tremendously well. And we should also learn from the river in this respect that floods and droughts are a part of life and we must address. Then there's the issue of pollution. River, rivers have a tremendous time dealing with pollution from human activity. 
And uh, we also must deal with pollution, with our own lives, from our own self-contamination, to allowing others also to contaminate us, blocking our channels with garbage, or we allowing ourselves to be connected to tributaries, or people flowing into our lives, all their poison and hurt. People don't want to go anywhere. People who are going to change our course and change the chemistry of our lives. We have to learn to deal with these things also. And then we under, must understand most of all that a river is a part of a system. It's supported by other rivers. We are all supported by other people in our lives. And, and we also support other individuals. What we have discussed is quite simplistic because as it pertains to a river being compared to us as a human being, it's, it's very simplistic because a river doesn't have thoughts, ideas, emotions, a soul, but we can learn from this comparison. And I hope that you will take heed to whatever we have discussed. And I want to leave you with, and I want to leave you with some questions that are pertaining to your life and a comparison to your own river. What stage of, our, of your river are you? Are you at the stage where you want to be? Have you grown within each stage of life? Or are you still behind? Have you benefited from those that have contributed to you? Or have you contributed to others like a tributary? What ac achievements or accomplishments have you made with your life so far? Are you prepared for the natural cycles of floods and droughts? Have your life been polluted? If yes, are you in the process of cleansing and healing your life? Our lives are comparable to a river. Like Sam Cooke said, just like a river, I have been running. My question to you is, where are you running to or what are you running from? This is today's um, video and I hope it has been informative and informational. Please remember to subscribe if you are not a subscriber to this channel and always remember to learn it, become it and share it.